Are we ready to recall Mr. Davis' Yes, we are, Your Honor. Okay. Recall on Wayne Davis, page 16, C377407. Mr. Davis is still present with Mr. Arnold, and we had Mr. Jocko and Mr. Wall back. Mr. Arnold, um, how do you want to proceed with this time? Uh, before I have to put Mr. Davis under oath, I just want to answer some specific questions in regards to what we just heard. Okay. It is only for the testimony you're about to give in this action shall be the truth of the whole truth and nothing but the truth shall have you back. Sure, we'll be Thank you, Mr. Davis. Call your first and last name for the record. Hawaiian Keith Davis. Could you spell it? Uh, D, 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 A, D, I, S. And D. Hawaiian, D, U, A, N, E. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Davis. Okay. Oh, <coughs> Mr. Arnold has questions. Oh, Mr. Uh, and this. Mr. Davis, um, you heard the conversation between um, your wife and you while you were in custody. Yes, yes, yes sir. And um, when did that conversation happen? This happened, uh, I think, the day of my birthday, June 14th. At that point, was the um, bond posted? No, sir. What was the reason that your wife came down to have that discussion with you in regards to Mr. Jones and the cash she said, bond? She said, I'm not signing no papers for uh, what's her name? No, like and when she said that she didn't like him, who was she referring to? Uh, Cash Jones. Because her, her family has, her family has problems with it. I don't have problems. She was like, I, uh, you pop that set out. And, uh, that's what she said. And, uh, I was just telling her to throw her the fuck off, get her off my, excuse my, get her off my back. You know, say I don't want to look like no wolf for her or her family. You know, and I'm selling out. Let me ask the question: Did you think at that time in the bond process that your wife's signature was necessary for you to be released? Yes, sir. And so in the effort to convince her to go ahead and get her signature, what did you tell her in regards to Mr. Jones? I said, he don't have nobody like that to put up. This is two of the people just so she could sign the fucking bond and leave, you know, leave that as is. But she was saying I was a sellout. They played a whole tape. Okay. Did you um, come to find out that you did not need her signature to enter into the bond process. I found out just uh, following when I see when he came up here soon. And so any conversation that you had with your wife at that time was in an effort just to get her to comply with the bond process. That's right. I wanted to go on without I got cancer and uh, I just called it back in here eating y'all process food. You know, I, I told the cancer right here. And it's not in the movie this side. The hottest processed food in here. They don't sell them no fruit. They don't, it's just terrible. Fake potatoes, fake milk, fake everything. It ain't good for an ex cancer patient. Now I got it again. I, I, uh, they took me to the hospital, UMC, on the 5th of May. They, uh, uh, he came up to my cell and said, uh, Mr. Davis, hurry up and get dressed. You, uh, you need emergency surgery. So I went over there. They did all the uh, CAT scans and stuff. And uh, they preferred me to my cancer doctor. So I went to see him on the 8th of May. And he said, uh, I'll get you to do a colonoscopy in a week, CAT scan in two weeks, a PET scan in three weeks. They haven't came here to do nothing. I'm, I'm in a life situation and I will say anything to save my life. 
So if there's issues with not getting that medical care and there's an order that you need or anything, we will sign that. There's no issues with that. What, where are you, what are you trying to get out with this information, Ms. Arnold? No, we can provide everything that we need. Uh, okay. Any cross donation on these very limited issues? Very limited. Uh, sir, so my understanding of your testimony is that we thought you needed uh, Ms. Clemens' signature in order to get out of this. Yes, 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 sir. And in order to facilitate that, you lied to her. Yes. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you're like, not under oath anymore. Mr. Arnold, did you want to talk to Mr. Jones any further, or are you good? Mr. Davis? Or, oh, Mr. Jones? No, I'm good with everything. Okay. Let's, I guess, argument? Sure. Unless you had anything further to present. Uh, nothing further, Your Honor. This has been a very unorthodox hearing, so I'm giving everybody an opportunity to be heard. Go ahead. Mr. Arnold, your argument regarding whether you've met your standard. Under the source hearing. Your Honor, um, nothing has been provided to show that um, Mr. Jones, the person that is putting up the amount of cash bail, is going to derive from this story. There's a hope at some point and at some time that he will derive from it, but there's no contract signed between him. And Mr. Davis, the state hasn't produced any contract um, showing that. Additionally, um, the state um, is trying to say from Mr. Davis's own mouth that Mr. Jones is just a middleman. However, again, he had this conversation with his wife as he explained in an effort just to convince her to go ahead and sign whatever paperwork at that time that he was under the impression that she needed to sign. As he stated in effort in reference to myself, there was no paperwork that she needed to sign to proceed with the um, bill. No one at this juncture is deriving any financial benefit from his release. Um, I'm sure there's hopes I, to be honest, Your Honor, I get the call every other day in regards to you know some kind of series or some something that somebody wants to. We haven't agreed to anything. We haven't signed anything. We have a trial to prepare for. I need Mr. Davis out so I can prepare for that trial and go ahead and um, be ready in November. for the court that his attorney provided to me that this is a gift uh it's clearly not true i mean it, it's just out of that uh the the interview he gave on vlad tv says i expect some stipulations i want to uh have a television series out of this so mr jones's response is actually kind of similar to mr davis's response when it comes to this case don't believe the words that are coming out of my mouth it's just entertainment it becomes even Matter though, when he makes has that same conversation with Mr. Davis on jail calls where there's literally nobody to perform. He says, Mr. Joseph, we need to get some episodes in before you go to trial. We need to get 10 episodes done before you go to trial. And, Let's be honest. I mean, the only reason why Mr. Davis is up notes at all is because of his, his self murder of Fox Shakur. That is his notoriety. In uh, order, I think uh, the other thing, a couple of the prison visit, which is either a he's uh, sorry, jail visit, front, or B, he's lying and he admitted he would say to include lie in order to get out of custody. Lastly, Your Honor, you know, I was, you know, one, the one advantage of having cameras in this case is that I'm able to review this court's rulings uh, before coming to court. And I would always review them. Yes, yes, fair, fair. We always, but I, yes, I'm not hiding. Yeah, no, 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 but I get it in HD. Uh, <laughs> and so what I heard this court say is that 
um, this court wanted a detention order. And this court specifically was concerned uh, about the defendant's repeated insistence that he committed these crimes. And that this court found that while his criminal past may be somewhat removed, concern, concerns still arose, including the FBI having to move away, about Mr. Davis's future safety, which is the reason why the court took the bail at 750 So let's just assume, A, it's a gift. That doesn't allay the court's concerns. How could found money without any consequence of losing it affect uh, Mr. Davis at all? If he's being told by some benefactor, just for out of goodwill, I'm letting you out, go out, there's no consequence to Mr. Davis. It doesn't have the uh, prescribed uh, uh, deterrence that uh, this court's detention order had. Let's say, which I think the evidence clearly leads to, that this is uh, him getting paid from his detailing of his criminal past. Well, I mean, pursuant to NRS 441B200, a killer cannot profit from their crimes. And what is even worse about this particular instance is that there was no way, there'd be no way for the estate to recover these funds. Because these, Mr. Davis is getting a benefit from having a uh, retaliation story of killing Mr. Shakur. As a result, Mr. Jones, in order to benefit from that, is paying the bail bond company $112,000, right? The purpose of the statute in, in statutory scheme in is that a, an estate should be able to recover the of their crime. Here, there's no way for the uh, estate I think what is abundantly clear from this thing, even though it's convoluted, um, is that a fraud is being perpetrated on this thing, one way or another. I, I, I think you, the court had an opportunity to question Mr. Jones, see what he said on live TV, see what he said on a jail call, see what Mr. Davis said in the privacy of that uh, jail call. I don't think this court can have any faith that this majority, the source of the majority is legal in the sense that it is for the benefit, uh, the illegal benefit of profiting from his or her crime. And then two, I don't think this court can even have, even have any faith as to what this actual nature of this is. More questions than answers. Ultimately, there's a question that was Mr. Davis himself. I don't have the bank records or anything to show that it was posted by a different source besides the word Mr. Jones, who was contradicted by his own previous statements on other matters. Ultimately, I do see there was collateral posted, but I don't really see where the actual $112,500 came from uh, with what they provided for me. I also don't find that the defense has met the burden of any of any sort of burden uh, for the uh, Nebia type hearing to show that the bail is not connected to Mr. Davis ultimately talking about Mr. Shakur's murder. Um, and any evidence to the contrary it is not credible. And so at this point, I don't find that the, you have met your burden. And so um, if you want, you can present additional evidence at some point if you want to, and to have a, a further hearing, or I can void the bail. And so that would go back to Mr. Jones. Your bank statements. I don't have them. The, the bill problem is here. He's on. He's on the Zoom. I had to give up six months of bank statements. You did send those over to the court, John. You didn't have them. Showing you what I have. It's going to show you that whatever you told him, he's going to exaggerate that. Mr. Jones, hold on. I also oh, turned in one of my there. products. Mr. Jones, hold on. We also sent the uh, you you Okay. Sorry. Okay. Yes. Do you have any papers? Yes, uh, Mr. Arnold provided uh, uh, six months of banking records. Okay. Your Honor, I'm the bail agent. Um, yeah. On this matter, I can testify if necessary on regards to the source of the funds.
review the bank records additionally, and then ultimately um, issue a minute order regarding the bank records if that satisfies my first concern. I don't know that it will necessarily satisfy my second concern, but I'll address it all in, in the minute order, okay? All right, it'll be under advisement. Thank you. Thank you, John. What did I mean? No. Oh, I'm sure Arnold can explain it to you. Ultimately, I have to review more documents to determine if that shows what Mr. Young says it does. Page 8, Kevin Perez Doug, succeed 378339. Mr. Perez Doug, provide approval. Well, as you can see, that didn't go well at all. That didn't go well at all. We're going to see what happens. We got to let the judge take a break and look over the paperwork and look over the six-month statements. Uh, bank statements from Wax uh, bank account that he provided to the bondsman. But like the, the judge said, I don't see uh, Wax six months of Wax bank statements to see where this hundred thousand came from. That's why she was going to Im immediately deny for that reason, and then she got another reason. But he not getting out through Wax. No, he's not getting out through Wax. Nice try, Wack. You're about to get your money back to give it back to those people that gave it to you. <laughs> nice try, buddy. You're about to get a refund. I hope you got your receipt, buddy. I hope you got your receipt. You're about to get a refund, nigga. You're going to have to get them people that money back. There go your TV deal. Hey, Wack, you better hope they don't lock your ass up for perjury, nigga. You better hope they don't lock your ass up for perjury, nigga. For the record, cash CASH Jones J O N E S. Thank you, sir. Mr. Arnold, you may proceed. Thank you, Arnold. Mr. Jones, um, what was the amount um, that you paid for the bail bond premium in this case? Uh, 112,000. It was 15 percent of whatever the 750 was. Okay, uh, 112,000 and some odd dollars. $500, is that correct? One twelve five, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you paid that out of your business? Yes, sir. And what's your business name, sir? Uh, 100 Entertainment. And you're the sole owner of that business, is that correct? Yes, sir. And that business is a, um, a business license to do business in the state of Nevada. Yes, sir. And how long have you had that business? Oh, uh, roughly uh, eight years, maybe. And again, you used the proceeds from that business and you provided us with the documents um, showing 
that those amounts were taken from your business account. Is that correct? Yes, sir. How do you know Mr. Davis, sir? Uh, I know him passing. Um, I know his son. I uh, know him. Uh, we said I would talk a few a few times in general, you know, uh, about personal things. Um, you know, he was having this bout of cancer. Um, and, you know, um, personal things, industry stuff, you know, just regular conversation. He's a, he's a, he's always been a, a monumental guy in our community conversation. So, you know, and I've helped several people in our community, uh, whether it was funerals, whether it was for bail. Uh, in this situation, I know his cancer has been, uh, I don't know if it's come out of remission or with this speaking with his son. I know he's having a, a issue in there, so uh, I'll let the help it in. We appreciate that, sir. Um, sir, are you deriving any benefit um, financially from Mr. Davis's release? I know that. All right, I have no further questions, John. State cross examination. Yes, do you need to stand up on the podium because of the blue jeans aspect? Or... Sure. Uh, uh, sir, um, you're uh, you're in the entertainment business, is that right? Uh, that's one of my businesses, yes. Sir, and uh, you also uh, go by the moniker WAC 100? Uh, yes, I do. Um, and one of the things that you do is manage you know, some artists like the game and blue face, etc. Yes. And uh, you, where do you live? Uh, I have a residence in California. I have multiple residences in California, uh, Oklahoma, as well as New Jersey, New York. Okay. And is it fair to say that the last four digits of your phone number are six nine seven? Six nine seven nine. Okay. All right. And I want to turn your attention. We were provided a letter by. Uh, um, Mr. Arnold that said that you had known Mr. Davis and his family for many years. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, you know, they're, they're a pillar of our community, especially the urban community. Well, I think, I think, let me clarify, you said I have been a good friend of Mr. Davis and his family for many years. Is that right? Well, uh, I know his sister. Uh, I know him and his son. When did you first meet Mr. Davis? Oh, in passing, maybe about, I don't know, eight years ago, maybe. Um, when did you become good friends with Mr. Davis? Good friends with a lot of people. I'm sorry, when did you become good friends with Mr. Davis? Um, the day I met him, the day we shook hands. Uh, you know, we come from our upbringing, we come from the opposite side of the track. So, uh, in my travels over the last 25 years of uh, coming from the gang life and making my exit from being a gang banger. Anybody that I meet as willing to sit out with me and be cordial and be respectful, uh, I'm going to consider a good friend. Um, all right. And so the other thing you say in the letter that, you, that Mr. Arnold provided to us is that the money is a gift and Mr. Davis is not obligated to repay. Is that right? That's right. All right. Um, are there? Do you have any um, contract between you and Mr. Davis? No, not as not as a gift. Okay. Do you have any financial agreement with Mr. Davis? Not as a gift. Do you have any financial agreement with his son? Uh, no, no, I don't. No. I want for him to come work for me. Uh, that's what we want to do. We try to get him on the streets. Now, um, so are there any stipulations that you have with Mr. Davis in order to put up this money for? Well, my stipulation would be uh, bail bonds, and I definitely want him to be on house arrest to protect myself. Now, have you ever said you are thinking about getting Mr. Davis out with the stipulation that you do a series with? Uh, We've had talks and conversations just about what would be a series, uh, as of the BMF series, and just 
uh, in question in general conversation, um, talking about his life story. But I'm not in TV like I'm in music. I don't do TV. Okay. I've never done a television show or any of that. I do music, music streaming, uh, diverse stuff like that. Okay, so I just want to be very clear about this. Have you ever stated that you planned on getting Mr. Davis out as long as he did a stipulation with you to do a television series with you? No, I'm not saying this story would be a very interesting story. Um, as if Orlando Anderson's story would be a very interesting story. Um, as if the BMS story, as if my story. Uh, we talk about it. Everybody talks about it, but again, that's not my lane. If that's what he chooses to do, then that's what he chooses to do. That's not my, that's not what I do. And um, you, admit, you had mentioned earlier, you had agreed with me earlier that uh, the last four digits of your phone number were 6979, correct? 6979, yes. And you've had uh, at least one conversation with Mr. Davis uh, via jail calls, is that correct? One call, yes. I spoke with him one time. And as part of that time, you asked Mr. Davis whether or not he had signed the contract. Is that right? Yes, I did. What contract was that? Uh, his life rights contract. Somebody told me he had did a life rights deal, and I was asking them why didn't they come assist him. And so you didn't ask him to send you uh, his uh, his waiver of his life rights to you, have, have you? No, I mean, at the end of the day, Again, that's not my lane. That's not what I do. I do music. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to play some exhibits later, Your Honor. But um, in terms of uh, if someone were to say that this money put up is not entirely for you, would that be the truth or a lie? So I would say say it again. If someone were to say that that uh, the money provided here to bail Mr. Davis out. Is not from you. Would that be the truth or a lie? Be a lie. Okay. If you say, someone, you say, I didn't send the money. That's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're saying I'm not the one providing the funds. Yes. Yeah, that would be a lie. If someone said you are being used as a front, would that be the truth or a lie? That would be a lie. If someone says you are a middleman in this transaction, would that be a truth or a lie? That would be a lie. If uh, somebody said that there's a movie company putting up the money for you, would that be the truth or a lie? What company? A movie company. No, that would be a lie. Okay. Um, so uh, your testimony is you're not a man. I'm not a what? A middleman. No, I have no contracts for any movie, co movie companies. I've never had a contract with a movie company. I've never done television. It's not my thing. I'm moving into the, I'm actually moving out of entertainment into the diaper business. I have a company called the Club of Diapers. Uh, I have contracts in Congo, Nigeria, uh, Amazon, uh, Walmart, and so on. So I'm really moving away from entertainment. These are things you can, I can provide documents, MOUs, contracts for. No, and I, I appreciate that, Mr. Jones. Um, your Honor, I think I'm going to have, I don't know how mechanically we want to do this. I have a video featuring uh, Mr. Jones uh, talking about the stipulations that he would require. Yes. Okay. And then I also have um, a couple of jail calls talking about signing a contract with uh, Mr. Uh, you just play them and then they will play also from your computer and they will play through the uh, speaker. I think for this witness in particular. Are you on that TV? I'm going to stop it. You want to authenticate that? Glad TV interview. Yeah, so you agree that you did a Glad TV interview, is that right? I work with Glad. I'm contracted to go to Glad. I go there like. Much. In fact, you did one about a month ago, is that right? Uh, one or two ago, maybe something like that. Yeah. Okay, and uh, I think Mr. Arnold. About two, three months ago. Yeah. I think Mr. Arnold will stipulate that the person convicted as WAC 100 is Mr. Jones. Right. Okay. All right, so I think we have foundation for the Vlad interview for 21. You may play. His lawyer did an interview recently and said, 
KPB is a liar. He made up all this stuff just to make some money for people like, you know, me for interviews and to get out of a, you know, a serious drug case. He was never in Las Vegas. All this is fake. And he's not connected to Tupac's murder at all. They're not believable. They're believable. Do I believe him? That's up to law enforcement. <laughs> that's what I'm not going to say. That's up to law enforcement. He's going to be home in the next five days. You're going to be allowed to keep your knees. Yeah, he's yeah. always satisfied. <coughs> we'll get some good art. Fine, make 750. 750, so you got to put 25. Yeah, I've been thinking about going to get him to do anything. What's the. Stipulations that I do the series on people watching. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Jones, did you hear that interview? interview. Yeah, and it's fair to say that. You understand, you understand if, why? Wait, wait, sir, sir. You can answer my questions. I'm sure Mr. Arnold has questions for you. You can answer them. So it's fair to say that you said you would bail Mr. Davis out as long as he follows some stipulations, correct? It's interchangeable, right? You know, sir, sir, my question it requires, sir, my question simply requires a yes or no answer. Did you tell, did you tell, or did you say that you would bail out Mr. Davis assuming he follows some stipulations? Look, look, Vlad, you know, me and Vlad discussed that. Okay, we're gonna say that. We discussed what we're going to do before we interview. That everybody knows that about Vlad. And... And in fact, you uh, you said that you would bail him out in return for uh, an agreement to do a series on Mr. Davis's life, correct? Um, that's what I said to Vlad, but KPB is already involved in somebody uh, with that, I believe, with his book. I have no contracts with him, no dealings with him on that. Okay, so you're saying what you said, uh, yeah, just not true. We have, before you go on, Vlad, you're you have a discussion about what you're going to talk about, what needs to be said so we can drive the views. Nothing about Vlad or nothing about YouTube that says that we're being truthful about what we're saying. We're entertaining. I'm just, you know, being truthful, which I do a lot of interviews. I do interviews every week on No Jumper, and we sit there and we BS about things and we exaggerate things and we make up things. But it's a view thing. They pay you for that. Okay, so you are exaggerating or not telling the truth when you're on Vlad TV. I mean, you see, the number I gave wasn't accurate. Probably going to, you know, that's what the conversation was. I would have gave you the accurate number. That's what it was. All right. Uh, Your Honor, at this point, I would like to publish a jail call between uh, Mr. Davis and Mr. Jones. It's from, uh, sorry, with in order to protect Mr. Jones' privacy, it's just. It's just the last four digits are six nine seven. No, no. Oh, excuse me. My last four is six nine seven nine. This nigga look crazy. This nigga look crazy. You may be getting a perjury charge, brother. I don't know how many days that may hold, weeks, months, but you may be getting a perjury charge. But this nigga looks crazy. Southside supposed to have killed a Pyru, Mar Pyru, shot at Mar Pyrus, and on Pyru, you up here trying to get the Southside Crip out? Yo, bro. And you said it was business. You said it to Pork Butt, the dirty cop. You said it to him that it was business. He said he forgave you because it was business. And now you saying it was a gift and you not doing no series with him and all that. You wasn't, nigga, you going to jail on Pyro, nigga. You going to jail. He's never called me direct. Somebody's always called me for him. So we believe your last four are six, nine, seven, right? Don't know. My last four or three, what did we say? But my last three is nine, seven, nine. 
Yes, I would agree with that. I'm going to publish a, a call between Mr. Davis and Mr. Jones. So I'm going to reiterate everything that Wack is saying because it's very hard to hear, right? So I'm going a, I'm to a play it and then I'm going to say what he said, right? I'm going to say what he, I'm going to let you hear what he said because it's very hard to hear. I got my ear to the goddamn shit. All right, hold on. Jail call between uh, Mr. Davis and Mr. Jones. From uh, sorry, with in order to protect Mr. Jones' privacy, it's just it's just the last four digits are six nine seven. No, no, oh, excuse me. My last four is six nine seven nine. He's never called me direct. Somebody's always called me for him. So we agree. Your last four are six nine seven, right? No, no. My last four or three, what are we saying? And my last three is nine, seven, nine. Yes, I would agree with that. I'm gonna publish uh, a call between Mr. Davis and Mr. Jones. Okay. Yo, y'all telling me this shit is not crazy? Seeing Keefe D and Wack together? Just looking at this image. Y'all telling me this ain't crazy? This nigga Suge Knight is spinning around in his cell right now, my nigga. This nigga Suge Knight is doing 360s in his cell right now. That nigga's kicking over shit and, like... Nigga, every part, Mark James on it, he not even feeling this. Yo, this is crazy. Even Mark James ain't jacking this, bro. Yo, this is crazy. And this nigga lying. He said, yo, man, I've been, Wax said, yo, man, I've been doing my due diligence and everything. So as soon as you get out, you know what I'm saying? We're going to get the thing going. Hold on. He said, my thing is this, fuck the movie shit. We get to that later. Let's do the series.
He said we got like 30, 40 different episodes, you know, and then something else. He said, I'm just telling you what my idea is. You know, we can get these first episodes done. He said, yo, man, you got to remember, bro, this shit could set you up for the rest of your life. Look at his face like, damn, I fucked up. <laughs> he said, you can license it to this and that throughout the world, whole world forever. <laughs> Look at KVD face like, damn, dog. <laughs> then Wax said, yo, just let me go get tied up with these big wigs and so and so. Look at KVD listening like, damn, dog. I told you come see me, nigga. <laughs> These niggas so smart, they stupid. These niggas so smart, they stupid. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga Wax says, Yeah, after we do that, you know, and you got the book, we just gonna take the book and get it turned and, and script it into a series. Gonna script the book into a series. Yo, bro, how you talking about you ain't in TV, you ain't thinking about doing TV, you on purpose, and you just on the phone with this nigga a few weeks ago saying all this shit right here. Yo, my nigga. Yo, you get ready to go to jail for perjury, my nigga. You get ready to go to jail for fucking perjury. Oh, my God. Vlad, you you the best, bro. <laughs> We're getting niggas tripped up, my nigga. I, I can't even blame you, man. These niggas want to fucking run their mouth so much. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you got another one, Vlad. You got another one. <laughs> <laughs> Look at KVD face. <laughs> oh, Look at KVD face. All we got to do is get this first 10 done. And we good.
KVD says something about uh you know I think he I think he said I don't want focus on no few. He said, nah, man. And you know, man, in a few years, this shit gonna be like BMF in power. Why get ready to go to jail for perjury? Oh, whack, you busted, whack, you busted. He said, yo, you got uh, somebody's story. You got the Keefe D story. You got the Baby Lane story. Look at this. You busted, nigga. Oh, Keefe D, go sit your ass back down, nigga. Don't even think you getting out now. This nigga is not the one to fucking bail you out. Running his fucking mouth all the time. All he had to do was go and do it. Keep it low. And he wouldn't have been, and he would have got you out running his fucking mouth, running his mouth. Paru. It is alleged that the Southside Crip standing right there, looking though they got a Paru standing over his head right now, trying to free him. And he's standing there in jail for allegedly being a part. Of killing a mob Piru, shooting at a mob Piru. Yo, this is a sad day in gang history, my nigga. You see, there's a sign called you, this picture right here is what you call mother effing money. Where money, money is the root of all evil. You see that? That's the devil over that man. Money is the root of all evil, boy. That nigga's a pyro standing over a south side crib trying to free him after he's standing there allegedly for the murder of a mob pyro and shooting of another a mob pyro affiliate. Wow. This is devilish. Oh, this nigga here is crazy. Oh, my God. Did you say that on the phone? Oh. He tells KVD that none of the bail bondsmen want to do it. So he had to hook up with his people to get hooked up with his people to get it through. So they, because, you know, they had to register the address. Bro. That's why y'all seen I, when I went looking for who was bailing them out when they had those two companies down. One was a company that didn't even exist no more that was bought by another company. That's an insurance company with a Bills Bondsman division in Jersey. Oh, these niggas is busted. The feds might be on whack ass after this. Oh, he probably worked for their ass, so they probably gonna do shit. Yeah, I 
He said, I'm waiting, I'm doing everything that I was supposed to do. I'm just waiting for them to register the address. And then Keefe D asked him some. He said, man, you 60-something years old, man. You ain't where I worry about that. He said, but I, I've been on so-and-so ass. Ask him. I've been working. I'm on it. I'm working on it. Ask him. He, he said somebody name. So basically the last part of it, he was just like, yo, just, you know, do what you got to do. Da, 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 da. I'm ready. Call me when you ready when I'm here. Mr. Davis is part of that conversation as part of the group. I can provide a copy to the court. The court wants to hear, but particularly the last day, we're talking about whether or not Mr. Davis has signed the contract and Mr. Davis confirms that he has signed the contract. Um, um, yeah. um, yeah. 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 so you know, right my house, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. oh, oh. Not right now. Okay. Um, she has another exhibit to play, but, there are any questions you want to ask? but nothing for uh, okay. Anything further forms you know? No, Mr. Arnold, any questions you want to ask? Mr. Jones? Yeah. Mr. Jones, do you remember the conversation that you had with um, Mr. Davis by telephone? Yes, I do. And can you tell us in regards to the conversation generally, what were you all discussing? Well, uh, the Bob was having a troubling time for the whole of the wife. And unless they had a call we could go to the house arrest, they weren't moving, they wasn't moving. Um, I also had uh, discussed with DVD that in fact will be a reader's book, right? And that upon him coming home, if he comes home, uh, we can go over his book and some things that could be done to we'll do those things. Um, at the time, everybody has to realize is that I wasn't given any instructions on, I couldn't have an open conversation with you. An open conversation is an open conversation. Um, something that hasn't been done, something that hasn't been done. Okay. And in, in that jail phone call, um, it talks about something about a contract. Did you and KPD have any contract? Well, uh, what it was, well, KPD had a vehicle, <coughs> um, a very long vehicle um, that I was trying to get to, and it's on the East Coast. It was some title problems. I found the owner of the vehicle. Um, that guy told me what I needed to do if I wanted to obtain this vehicle. Um, so our conversation is all over the place in there. Um, at the end of the day, I don't do television. Uh, is it something that I may look into one day? Possibly. I have ordered to have a history. But as of today, right now, as we sit, I have no contract with him. I have no uh, television deal with any network. Uh, 
I'm a business guy. So of course it was a thought, but a thought versus being with the legitimate businesses is two different things. Do you have anything in writing that states that you will derive any benefit from TPD's release and his story? There are no. It sounds like eventually you and TPD may sit down and have a conversation. Was that the Listen, intent of that discussion? That's exactly what it is. <coughs> I can plant a seed. I planted seeds. Uh, it took 10 years ago. Um, but positioning yourself for the near future, uh, that's, that's our food, that's my business. What it is today, uh, that's not, there's no business today. Right. And then in regards to the conversation that you have with Vlad, who's Vlad? Vlad is a, is a podcast guy. He's a blogger. <laughs> I, love bloggers. I blog every week. I blog every Thursday on Little Jumper. Um, you know, and it's, it's a shame that the world takes what we blog about as if it's it's real. Like it's things that go about me on the internet uh, down to uh, fights that's not me fighting and they say it's me. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's astounding to me that I'm allowed to be admitted in court when it's just that, it's just entertaining. Well, I, think I, think the the role. I think the so, purpose yeah. of them enter um, introducing it into evidence was that the statement in regards to stipulations, if um, he was to receive 75000 which was not the bail amount, what were those stipulations? Prior to um, your interview with Vlad, did you have any um, stipulations that you had entered into <laughs> with Mr. Davis? I hadn't even talked to Mr. Davis. So again, it was just a a blog and interview that I had. I hadn't spoke to him um, since he had been arrested. So it was just me talking. He asked the question, I built on the question. If you gotta sit there two, three hours, you stretch a conversation, you say whatever you gotta do to keep the back and forth going on. That's what it is, no more, no less. And at the end of the day, maybe these people should start telling us you're under oath about everything you're about to say because before we go in the room, they say, hey, let's go ahead and the show. And that's what we do. Uh, one last question. Um, I believe it was in the Vlad interview, and additionally, you may mention it today. Um, did you become aware of Mr. Davis signing um, some life um, rights away in regards to his story? The individuals told me this. I don't know if it's true or not. You know, somebody had told me, I guess. Where we get the book with, I believe the book's been published for, I don't know, three to five years. I couldn't tell you. I had anything to do with it, but um, they had told me maybe whoever had something to do with the book had something to do with it. I don't know. I haven't really looked into it. So you, you haven't seen any documentation in regards to Mr. Davis signing his life right? This dude is such a liar, bro. And we we know when he's lying because we've been watching this nigga live for so long, and we know when he's telling the truth. This dude's doing a lot of lying. Oh God, he might get he might catch a perjury charge. That's way, but you were made aware of that prior to <laughs> going ahead and giving up this bail money. Is that correct? That's correct. And. Again, you're giving up this bail money in a hope that maybe you can have a sit down conversation with him and um, um, discuss a series or something like this. When it's all said and done, because the outcome of the situation uh, is really what's going to dictate. You know what I mean? Um, I believe uh, Mr. Davis is innocent, but if the outcome of the situation uh, show something any different, and then he's confined, and he is guilty of what they say guilty of, then it changes the whole scenario. But if the man is innocent, then you know why not? And at that point in time, then there's no more, there's no stipulations on it. So when you say the outcome of the situation, if you had any deal with Mr. Davis, 
Bro, you just you, you dumbass nigga. You just got him bail denied right there. You said you had no interest in doing no no television anything at one point, right? You said you not bail him out to do no business in television. That's not your line of business. So now when he asks you, yo, this is why you, you motherfuckers don't need to slur yes and no, right? Not fucking elaborate, think that you smarter than the next person. The less you say, the better you are off. You keep rambling. Y'all niggas keep rambling and rambling and rambling, giving them information, volunteering information to fuck it up. Now, here he go. He He's trying to get you to say no, nigga. You ain't doing no. You ain't got no interest in doing no TV shit with him. You know what I'm saying? To help KVD get out. You already said you had no interest in it. Now you sitting there talking about, oh, well, you know, in that phone call, you know, if he innocent, then, you know, that could change things. Yeah, right, nigga. If he guilty, that what, what is that going to change? You still going to want to do the story either way, nigga. That's what the judge is getting ready to address in the second part. Like, this, these, these niggas, they, they so smart, they dumb. that would be done after the completion of the trial. It would have to be. We couldn't, we couldn't go no other way. We couldn't, we couldn't go any other way because if he's guilty, then it's like he's going to be looked upon a certain way. If he's innocent, as I think he is, as I know him to be, uh, understanding the case, then he'll be looked at a total different way. And then, yeah, he deserves it like to have somebody who will do, do some things for him. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you for the I'm just really confused. What is this contract for? Obviously, there's a contract that you guys are talking about. Obviously, there's a contract based not only on your blood interview, but based on the jail calls. So what is the contract for? This is where she tripped, tripped, whack up so crazy. This dumbass, I'm like, do I know what perjury is? Yeah, when you lie under oath, dumbass. Are you just tuning in, dumbass? Do I know what perjury is? Your dumbass coming in here late talking about do I know what perjury is? He's under oath, stupid ass. They call him lying under oath. Do you know what perjury is? Take your ass to another channel. Get out of here. This is where she trip him up, though. What contract are you referring to? Contract that you're talking about two or three months ago. I haven't even spoken to uh, Mr. Davis. Okay, so what is the contract that you and Mr. Davis are talking about? What's it for? Uh, the possibility of upon his completion of trial, right? And yeah, we could talk about doing some television or doing something like that, but you know, as of, yeah, as of right now, there's no business, there's no nothing. Nigga, you said you don't do television. You said you had no interest in doing business with him. This was a gift. Didn't you say that? Didn't you say that? Did you just forget what you just said, brother? She getting ready to get him. I don't want to be guilty. I mean, the people that we know that committed this crime are no longer with us. Um, you know, I come from I come from that. So, at the end of the day, uh, I just think he has a better shot of uh, sitting himself, walking into the, to the courtroom in a suit and tie and being healthy. Uh, the man has cancer, he's 60 years old with cancer. And, I, you know, I know this to be true. Uh, so, you know, that's just really my disposition. If he was come out uh, innocent, like uh, everybody else that has came out innocent and, and did something out of the fact, so be it. At that point in time, he's under no, he's not under any stipulations. No one happened, but at this present time, you know, I guess you could say, uh, you know, maybe I got faith in this man. I got faith in the man. You know, um, I haven't. I've been in these courtrooms before, bailing out other people. It's not the first time I posted bail. Or 
talking too much, brother. You're talking too much. Just answer her question, brother. Just answer her question, brother. Skilly the Dawn, good looking. Appreciate you. All right. Busted again. Busted again. But in in Wag phone call, he said, yo, my people, we going woo, 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 woo. And then his wife, he tell his wife that on the visit. You know what I'm saying? Like, that nigga ain't got the bread. He, he hooking it up with so-and-so. He... He said, yo, the man name is Al, and he's going to talk to a bondsman, or he's a bondsman. And just now, his wife said something, and then uh, TVD said, man, Cash ain't got the money to get me out. He just the middle man. I 
The lady, his wife says, yo, the dude cash is paying the money. He said he ain't doing, uh, he doing it for cash. And Keefe D is like, yo, nigga cash ain't got no money. I'm telling you, niggas is using him as a front. You know what I'm saying? And his wife is like, yo, but he got the money is coming in his name. He, I see he on the internet and stuff. He's like, she like, he, Keefe D like, look. The, the money coming from the movie company. You know what I'm saying? They using him as the front. You know what I'm saying? Like, just chill out. Just, they, just get, just, you know, they need to know that I live there type of thing. Right? He like, yo, cash ain't got the money. Niggas is using him as the front. Then how long I've been saying that, right? Since this nigga said he, been, he was bailing him out. Somebody's using that nigga. So we don't know who's really bailing this nigga out. So that's just two minutes, Your Honor. I think that without belaboring it, there's more conversation along those lines. Uh, I can submit the whole 45 minutes to the court, but the essence of that, and I don't know if it became as clear. He said they're using them as a front, so it looked like they didn't do it. It sounded like the nigga said, so it looked like it, like, it sounded like he said, uh, they use them as a front, so it don't look like Diddy did it. But I'm pretty much sure he didn't say Diddy. He said they didn't, did, they didn't do it, or did, I don't know. Diddy. Yeah, that's what he said. Uh, they just use him as a front so it don't look like they did it. Whoever they are, right? They are. He said they use him as a front. He ain't got that type of money. They just using him as a front so it don't look like they did it. So that's just two minutes, Your Honor. I think that without belaboring it, there's more conversation along those lines. Uh, I can submit the whole 45 minutes to the court, but the essence of that, and I don't know if it came as clear, uh, but it is uh, Cash and Mr. Uh, Jones for his cash.
Cash doesn't have the money to get me out. Cash doesn't have the money. And do you think Mr. Davis is worried? The Jewish man that owns the FA movie company, he's the one for me to have. Do you think he, in cash, got that money to put up for me? He don't, Paula. He don't got that money. They just use him as a front. Um, he was on to say a couple of discouraging things about Mr. Jones after that, but not particularly relevant to this proceeding. Um, but I, that's the state's speaking. Is there anything else that you wanted to address at this time? I think your comment just wants to speak to you. Yes, Your Honor. Um, I just have some questions to Mr. Jones that I'd like to clarify that conversation. But if I can't speak to him, Mr. Davis. First, Mr. Davis, and then I'll okay, ask sorry. the question. I'll, I'll call a couple matters and let you talk to Mr. Davis, then we'll recall it as soon as you get those answers. All right, who wants to be called? Are we ready to recall Mr. Davis' Yes, you are, Your Honor. Okay. Recalling Blaine Davis, page 16, C-377-407. Mr. Davis is still present with Mr. Arnold, and we have Mr. Jekyll and Mr. Wallback. Mr. Arnold, um, how do you want to proceed with this document? Um, before I have to put Mr. Davis under oath, I just want to answer some specific questions in regards to what we just heard. Okay. It is only for the testimony you're about to give an attention shall be the truth of both truth and nothing but the truth of what you got. Make me a second state and sign your first and last name for the record. Hawaii Keith Davis. Davis. Uh, D-A-V-I-S. D-A-V-I-S. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Davis. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Arnold has questions. Mr. Davis, um, you heard the conversation between um, your wife and you while you were in custody. Yes, yes, yes sir. And uh, when did that conversation happen? This happened uh, I think the day of my birthday, June 14th. At that point, was the um, bond posted? No, sir. What was the reason that your wife came down to have that discussion with you in regards to Mr. Jones and the cash she said, bond? She said, I'm not signing no papers for uh, what's her name, John. And when she said that she didn't like him, who was she referring to? Uh, cash, John. Because her, her family has, her family has problems with it. I don't have problems. Ooh. Ooh. Shout out to the South Side. South Side ain't having it. <laughs> yo, KVD wife, like, yo, I'm not fucking with whack. I don't like that nigga. She like, yo, he said his his wife family got a problem with him. Nigga, that nigga Pyro, real fuck with that nigga. You know what I mean? They keeping the G over there and KVD like they got a problem with him. I ain't got a problem with him. So the parent, like his, his wife don't want to sign the paperwork and be connected to what? You know what I'm saying? So KVD like, fuck that. I'm trying to get out. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Arnold has questions. Oh, Mr. Uh, and Ms. Mr. Davis, um, you heard the conversation between um, your wife and you while you were in custody. Yes, yes, yes sir. And uh, when did that conversation happen? 
It's happening uh, I think the day of my birthday, June 14th. At that point was the um, bond posted. No, sir. What was the reason that your wife came down to have that discussion with you in regards to Mr. Jones and the cash she said, bond? She said, I'm not signing no papers for uh, what's her name? No, I'm not. And when she said that she didn't like him, who was she referring to? Uh, Cass Jones. Because her, her family has, her family has problems with it. I don't have problems. She was like, I didn't, uh, you know, your pocket has set out. And, uh, that's what she said. And, uh, I was just telling her to throw her the fuck off, get her off my, excuse me, my friend, get her off my back. You know what I'm saying? I don't look like no wolf. Her or her family, you know, they don't sell out. Of Let me ask the question. Did you think at that time in the bond process that your wife's signature was necessary for you to be released? Yes, sir. And so in the effort to convince her to go ahead and get her signature, what did you tell her in regards to Mr. Jones? I said, he don't have nobody like that to put up. This is Jewish people. It's just, it's just, just so she could sign the fucking bond and leave, you know, leave that as is. She was saying I was a seller. They played a the whole case. Okay. Did you um, come to find out that you did not need her signature to enter into the bond process? I found out just uh, following when she became a pension. And so any conversation that you had with your wife at that time was in an effort just to get her to comply with the bond process. That's right. I want you to come on. But I got cancer. And uh, I just called it back. And here, eating y'all processed food. You know, I, I had colon cancer right here. And it's not in the movie this side. A lot of this processed food in here. They don't sell no fruit. They don't, it's just terrible. Fake potatoes, fake milk, fake everything. It ain't good for an ex cancer patient. Now I got it again. I, I, uh, they took me to the hospital, UMC, on the fifth of May. And they uh, uh, he came up to my cell and said, uh, "Mr. Davis, hurry up and get dressed. You uh, you need emergency surgery." So I went over there. They did all the uh, CAT scans and stuff, and uh, they preferred me to my cancer doctor. So I went see him on the eighth of May, and he said. Uh, I'll get you to do a colonoscopy in a week, CAT scan in two weeks, a PET scan in three weeks. They haven't came here to do nothing. I'm in a life situation and I will say anything to save my life. So if there's issues with not getting that medical care and there's an order that you need or anything, we will sign that. There's no issues with that. What, where are you, what are you trying to get out with this information? No. You can provide everything that we need at okay. this point, Your Honor. Any cross donation on these very limited issues? Very limited. Uh, sir, so my understanding of your testimony is that we thought you needed uh, Ms. Clemens' signature in order to get out of custody. Yes, 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 sir. And in order to facilitate that, you lied to her. Yes. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you're not under oath anymore. Mr. Arnold, did you want to talk to Mr. Jones any further, or are you good? Mr. Davis? Oh, oh, Mr. Jones? No, I'm good with everything. Okay, what's, I guess, argument? Sure. Unless you have anything further to present. I have nothing further, Your Honor. This has been a very unorthodox hearing, so I'm yeah. giving everybody an opportunity to be heard. Go ahead. Mr. Arnold, your argument regarding whether you've met your standard on oh, yeah, the no. source hearing. Your Honor, um, nothing has been provided to show that um, Mr. Jones, the person that is putting up the amount of cash bail is going to derive from this story. There's a hope at some point and at some time that he will derive from it, but there's no contract signed between him and Mr. Davis. The state hasn't produced any contract um, showing that. Additionally, um, the state um, is trying to say 
from Mr. Davis's own mouth that Mr. Jones is just a middleman. However, again, he had this conversation with his wife, as he explained, in an effort just to convince her to go ahead and sign whatever paperwork at that time that he was under the impression that she needed to sign. As he stated, in, effort, in reference to myself, there was no paperwork that she needed to sign to proceed with the um, bill. No one at this juncture is deriving any financial benefit from his release. Um, I'm sure there's hopes. I, to be honest, Your Honor, I get the call every other day in regards to you know, some kind of series or some something that somebody wants to. We haven't agreed to anything, we haven't signed anything, we have a trial to prepare for. I need Mr. Davis out so I can prepare for that trial and we can go ahead and um, be ready in November. Okay. Uh, I think what we learned today is that Mr. Jones is not credible when he says that he has no for Davis to tell him the crimes that he committed upon his release. Uh, the statement that he provided to the court, that his attorney provided to me, that this is a gift, uh, is clearly not true. I mean, it, it's just out of that uh, the, the interview he gave on Vlad TV says, I expect some stipulations. I want to uh, have a television series out of this. So Mr. Jones's response is actually kind of similar to Mr. Davis's response when it comes to this case. Don't believe the words that are coming out of my mouth. It's just entertainment. So it comes to no problem. Problematic though, when he makes has that same conversation with Mr. Davis on jail calls where there's literally nobody to perform. He says, Mr. Joseph, we need to get some episodes in before you go to trial. We need to get 10 episodes done before you go to trial. And Let's be honest. I mean, the only reason why Mr. Davis is of note at all is because of his, his self proclaimed work for Fox Shakur. That is his notoriety. In uh, honor, I think uh, the other thing, a couple of the prison visit, which is either a, he's uh, sorry, jail visit, front, or B, he's lying and he admitted he would say to include live in order to get out of custody. Lastly, Your Honor, you know, I was you know, one the one advantage of having cameras in this case is that I'm able to review this court's rulings uh, before coming to court. And I would always review that. Yeah, yeah, fair, fair. We but always I, have, yes, but I, I'm not hiding it. Yeah, no, 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 but I get it in HD. Uh, <laughs> and so what I heard this court say is that um, this court wanted a detention order. And this court specifically was concerned. Uh, about the defendant's repeated insistence that he committed these crimes. And that this court found that while his criminal past may be somewhat removed, concern, concerns still arose, including the FBI having to move away, about Mr. Davis's future, which is the reason why the courts with the bail, etc. So let's just assume, A, it's a gift. That doesn't allay the court's concerns. How could found money without any consequence of losing it affect uh, Mr. Davis at all. If he's being told by some benefactor, just for out of goodwill, I'm letting you out, go out, there's no consequence to Mr. Davis. It doesn't have the uh, prescribed uh, uh, deterrence that uh, this court's intention order had. Let's say, which I think the evidence clearly leads to, that this is uh, him getting paid from his detailing of his criminal past. Well, I mean, pursuant to NRS 4, 41B200, a children cannot profit from their crimes. And what is even worse about this particular instance is that there was no way, there'd be no way for the estate to recover these funds. Because these, Mr. Davis is getting a benefit from having a uh, retaliation story of killing Mr. Shakur. As a result, Mr. Jones, in order to benefit from that, is paying the bail bond company $112,000, right? The purpose of the statute in, in statutory scheme in Alice, that a, an estate should be able to recover the of their crime. 
Okay, there's no way for the uh, the same. I think what is abundantly clear from this thing, even though it's convoluted, um, is that a fraud is being perpetrated on this thing. One way or another. I, I, I think you, the court had an opportunity to question Mr. Jones, see what he said on Glad TV, see what he said on jail calls, see what Mr. Davis said in the privacy of that uh, jail call. I don't think this court can have any faith that this shorty, the source of the shorty, is illegal in the sense that it is for the benefit, uh, the illegal benefit of profiting from his or her crime. And then, two, I don't think this court can even have, even have any faith as to what this actual nature of this thing is. Lots more questions than answers. Ultimately, there's a question that was Mr. Davis himself. I don't have the bank records or anything to show that it was posted by a different source besides the word Mr. Jones, who was contradicted by his own previous statements on other matters. Ultimately, I do see there was collateral posted, but I don't really see where the actual $112,500 came from um, was what was provided for me. I also don't find that the defense has met the burden of any of any sort of burden uh, for the uh, Nebia type hearing to show that the bail is not connected to Mr. Davis ultimately talking about Mr. Shakur's murder. Um, and any evidence to the contrary it is not credible. And so at this point, I don't find that the, you have met your burden. And so um, if you want, you can. You heard that? Hold on. Let me bring it back. You heard that? It is illegal in the sense that it is for the benefits, uh, the illegal benefits of profiting from his or her crime. And then, two, I don't think this court can even have, even have any faith as to what this actual nature of this is. Lots more questions than answers. Ultimately, there's a question that was Mr. Davis himself. I don't have the bank records or anything to show that it was posted by a different source besides the word Mr. Jones, who was contradicted by his own previous statements on other matters. She said she don't have the bank statements to prove that Mr. Jones paid for everything by himself and stuff so for that reason she's going to pass ultimately i do see there was collateral posted but i don't really see where the actual one hundred twelve thousand five hundred dollars came from she says she do see the collateral has been posted but she don't see where the one hundred and twelve thousand and fifty dollars or whatever it was was uh uh paid from i mean yeah mr jones was contradicted by his own previous statements on other matters ultimately i do see there was collateral posted but i don't really see where the actual one hundred twelve thousand five hundred dollars came from uh, with what was provided for me i also don't find that the defense has met the burden of any of any sort of burden for the uh, Nebia type hearing to show that the bail is not connected to Mr. Davis ultimately talking about Mr. Shakur's murder um, in any other. She said she see the connection where it could be used when Mr. Davis talking about uh, Mr. Shakur's murder or Tupac's murder. Have a, a further hearing or I can void the bail, and so that would go back to Mr. Jones. So, sure do. The, you have met your burden. And so, um, if you want, you can present additional evidence to Mr. Davis, ultimately talking about Mr. Shakur's murder. Um, and any evidence to the contrary, it is not credible. And so, Mr. Jones was contradicted by his own previous statements on other matters. Ultimately, I do see there was collateral posted, but I don't really see where the actual $112,500 came from. Um, with what was provided for me. I also don't find that the defense has met the burden of any of any sort of burden uh, for the uh, Nebia type hearing to show that the bail is not connected to Mr. Davis ultimately talking about Mr. Shakur's murder. Um, and any evidence to the contrary, it is not credible. And so at this point, I don't find that the, you have met your burden. And so um, if you want, you can.
So right up to this point is where she says she don't think that the EVD met the burden because she sees that the the bail is connected to Mr. Davis talking about Tupac's murder. You know, that's a fact. We present additional evidence at some point if you want to and have a, a further hearing or I can void the bail. And so that would go back to Mr. Jones. Heard the statements. I don't have them. The, the bail problem is here. He's on He's on the Zoom. I had to give up six months of bank statements. You did send those over to the court, John. You didn't have them. Showing you what I have. So Wack interrupts and says that he didn't send the bank statements to the bondsman. So that's why the judge uh, got to look at the uh, bank statements. But we already know what it is. Yeah. It's going to show you that whatever you told me, you have to exaggerate that. Mr. Jones, hold on. I also turned in one of my properties. Mr. Jones, hold on. We also sent the bankers. Do you have any papers? Yes, uh, Mr. Arnold provided uh, uh, like six months of banking records. Okay. Your Honor, I'm the bail agent. Yeah. Um, on this matter, I can testify if necessary on regards to the source of the funds. So basically, the judge going to look at wax uh, bank statements that he submitted to the bondsman, and um, the judge is going to make a hearing on that, and that's what we waiting for. But like she said, it still ain't going to supersede the second part of she don't she don't see where this is him getting bailed out is not connected to him making money off of the death of Tupac Shakur. Like, no, nah, I'm not letting you out to get bailed out by this motherfucker so you could go make a... Uh, you can't make money on off of this while you on trial. Like, no, you can't do that. And this him bailing you out means that if he's bailing you out, then there is... Uh, opportunity for you to make money with him doing a TV series and movies. Nah, find somebody else. That's why she said I could void this and give Mr. Jones back Mr. Jones's money back or you could call another hammer and we could try this again and y'all could try to convince me but through the Cash Jones aka Wack One and running his goddamn mouth getting on Vlad and talking about, oh, I'm going to bail Keefe D out and I'm going to do a series with him. And just, if he never said none of that to Vlad, if he never said none of that to Pork Butt, the dirty cop, then it would have worked. It would have worked. We 
Run in your mouth, brother. Run in your mouth. Run in your mouth. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> This nigga sitting up there promoting him. Yeah, I'm a blogger. I'll be on TV, you know, every week. You know what I mean? Dip, 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 dip. You want to tell them where to find you so they could go watch more videos of you? And be like, this is the guy with all these gangbangers. He keeps talking all his gangbanging beef. This is the guy y'all want us to uh, release this guy under? Oh, no. Why would you promote you for them to go and see you in that light, you dumbass? <laughs> oh, my God, bro. You cannot make this stuff up, bro. Why would you promote them so they could go and see you in that light, bro? And then you up here lying and lying and lying and lying. Like, oh, they call they're gonna tell you to come in the courthouse. They need you to come to the courthouse and, and bring your paperwork so they can slap the cuffs right on your ass. Purge it yourself. That was a double loss for you today. Cause I know California, niggas in California is walking in circles right now. Like, niggas is pacing back and forth right now. Like, yo, man, every nigga in the gangbang community right now is calling each other on the phone like, yo, you see this nigga whack in the courthouse trying to bail out Keefe D? The Pyro trying to bail out the Crip who's locked up for shooting at the Pyro's. Congratulations, you played yourself. <laughs> Come on, son. Come on, son. Yo. The Pyro was in court today trying to bail out the Southside Crip that was in the car. They shot up the Pyro's and killed, up, killed Tupac. I would love to be a fly on the wall in some real gangster niggas' houses in, in L.A., boy. Like, I would love to be sitting around some real gangbang niggas out in the park right now playing dominoes, talking about this shit. I would love to be sitting there with these niggas right now to hear what the hell they got to say about WAC 100, man. I ain't talking about these wanksters. I'm talking about the real gangsters, the real... The niggas that them did time for this and died and lost homies for this. Like, I would love to be sitting with those niggas right now. Yo, blood. Yo, blood. I can't believe this nigga, blood. Yo, like, this is a monumental day in gangbanging history, man. Wow. I think about to go to jail for the, the crib set. Purges purges himself. That nigga's rarely going to jail for the crib set. Wow. Well, I guess we'll find out later on today. I'll update y'all, let y'all know what the judge said. But it, it, trust me, if you got common sense and you just watched that bail hearing, you know damn well they is not releasing this dude out to no whack one. 
so he could try to get some money. And Wag 100, you might be a good liar to these young niggas in the street, these young gang niggas on, on these social media platforms. But to us grown folk and them people in the courthouse, brother, you took a loss today. So get them people their money back, nigga. <laughs> KVD is not getting out, y'all. Trust me. Not through Wack One. It's not happening. Sorry. Let's go. I'll be back later on today. You know I'm dropping. I'm dropping videos on the hour. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I see there's a couple of knuckleheads in here. Stay tuned, knuckleheads. You, you'll get educated over here. Stop believing these niggas, these grown-ass gang, gang bangers that still manipulating y'all, putting packs in your hand, getting y'all to take charges because you ain't got a charge yet. All right? Learn from what you just saw. Learn from mistakes. Choke no joke. I'm out. Thanks for the cash app too. Uh, who was that? Thanks to all y'all that been uh, supporting lately. I appreciate y'all that support. Skilly the Dawn, good looking. For Alex, what up? Ron Suggs, thanks for the support. Stacy Galore, thanks for the support. Verse, thanks for the support. My man George Meadowbrook, thanks for the support. All right. You know what it is, Darnell Jones. You know what it is. Joke, no joke. I'm out. Yeah. Woo. Let's go. All right. Let's go out to the ladies. I got one for y'all. First one, get it, get the fries. All right. Looking beautiful out here. Water looking a little rough. But I'm here, baby. I'll holler back to y'all in a second. Let me get undressed. To Lisa Renee, I'll put my PayPal up so you can donate through the PayPal, right? Like, I'll put it in the stroll in the stroll at the bottom. Our cafe. 
They done turned it up. Look how they doing the dinner tonight. Look at this. It smell so good out here, I'm telling you. Shanae, make any cat day, okay? No one freak me this way. Had me tied up, my way and lied up. If it was a stick, no way I'd rise up. Time's up, she said no move. Suck my lips, said don't fuck up the groove. Blinking crazy, the blindfold moves. Smell something sweet across my lips, it moves. Here, bite this, tell me what it is. And friend, you can get these skins. Strawberries, untie me in a hurry. Dig you out like you have. mistakes man don't get tricked out that paper yeah it's an eden wall project you know what it is uh uh choke no joke you already know <laughs> y'all know i love that cooch you know what this is i love that cooch uh -huh. yeah it's an a thing clean Let's go. Yo, what's up? My nuts when I wake up. Got more than wood and I just bust one. And my hog and knee, I'm Ron Osley. Between the sheets, and she want to ski. And just shout with me with what I thought was pee. She rolled the D, our water broke B. Not pregnant, but baptized me. I'm down for more love, but change the sheet. She said, please, I want more. Next thing I know, mattress dripping the floor from her juices. Oral had me stoned, had a Corinne and Medusa at one. And when I look in her eyes, between her thighs, I tell you no lie, ain't shit won't buy. I rob and take it for me to taste it. Red lobster, pussy, biscuit, freshly baked. Uh, eat that coochie all night. She sprayed my face like sugar spray. I love her. I eat her coochie all night. She sprayed my face like sugar spray. I love her. Suck my nuts when I wake up. Got more than wood and I just bust one. And my hog and knee, I'm Ron Osley. Between the sheets, and she wanted to ski. And just shout with me with what I thought was pee. She rolled the D, our water broke B. Not pregnant, but baptized me. I'm down for more love, but change the sheet. She said, please, I want more. Next thing I know, mattress dripping the floor from her juices. Oral had me stoned, had a Corinne, and Medusa at one. And when I look in her eyes, between her thighs, I tell you no lie, ain't shit won't buy. I rob and take it for me to taste it. Red lobster, pussy, biscuit, freshly baked. Uh, eat that coochie all night. She spray my face like sugar spray. I love her. Joke, no joke. I'm here, baby. You know what it is. Shout out to all my fellas that love that cooch. <laughs> Let's go. Yes, I have played the ass, extra hours for more cash. You go 
on half on that coke yak. Get to the block, cause it get packed. Little babies, adults are crack. Uh -huh. We feed them too, we don't pump like that. Plus, it's like us giving back. And they sales is the reason why we got so many packs of chicken. The hood not missing. Muslim said, don't put pork on chicken. They got on Al about that, they thought he didn't listen. He wasn't been touched from them government missions. But they forget that when they bite that chicken, this is when the players get knocked, cause it's hot out. The sexy show out, glowing with the back glass on the mouth. She see you with the next chick, then she dumb out. Hustlers dumb out, just for nothing. Busting for attention, just dumbing. Cause we know y'all ain't busting nothing. Life's a box of chocolates, you're riding a pipe, playing the bench, kids on the fence, watch your popo, chase prints, don't dismiss your brethren, for dumb shit, keep it gangster, no shit where you live, 12 run right up in your crib, you never been aware, where else could you live, that's gangster boo coming through, throwing it up, fucking his muffler up, scraping the concrete with Willie so sweet, he got his score. By the chief of police from 233rd Laconia to Gun Hill Road. Got knocked in and tell like Joe. Very. Okay. <laughs>
With your pockets, cop the ice locket. Yeah. She's somewhere in Houston, you blew like a rocket. Her seed was bait, through the line she caught it. Gave her all that loot, but she couldn't afford it. Praying to them bitches, y'all feeling hell. Blue puff in your face, daddy, all about Benjamin. Remember me, I'm your friend to the end. Like Chucky, used to slay bitches like Bumpy. Thinking why they cuff me, think of the luxuries you had. In the cell with other willies, you brag. I pushed the big bends with 20 year drills. In the club, Chris for all my men Sitting across the bar, what's up, star? Back to reality, you back in bars You chose not to listen, had the age class glisten Knew the rules of the game, played yourself on position Stay DL, be DL is L You ain't DL when your name ain't Bell Stay DL, be DL is L You ain't DL when your name ain't Bell Stay DL, be DL is L You ain't DL when your name ain't Bell Yo, son, yo, son, yo, son, the son is me, yo. I see, you ain't noticed me, yo. I see, so this time is just... Joke, no joke, special request, all right? This is how I do, this is how I do, special request. This one go out to you, all right? Trees in the palms of dealers and fiends. Late night roam the streets. Weed is weaker, but it's cheaper. Not many chicks frying like divas. Out west, every chick's a model like Eva, and you know I'm far from believing her. So I'm Ging her like she G and me. Banging in LA is a different thing. At the end, you either dead on the bang, getting out, doing better things. On sunset, where they hang. Hollywood, where they hustle for change. Times Square here, it's the same. No matter where you go, you'll find a lane. On the west, they kick it with cane. On the east, trees the souls you think. East Coast. Shout out to west Chris coast, Leo. East Coast. Go out to west Chris coast. Leo. Grab your raps, roll it up. If you rap, West Coast, East Coast. West Coast, East Coast, West Coast. Grab your glasses, take a toast. If you rep East Coast, when I'm on the West and I'm doing my thing, no offer me coke or your nose I bang. Friends don't offer other deadly things. Thanks for the hospitality, we'll still hang. I won't judge you, leave me as I came on the road to success, top of the game. Eat all the finer things in the food chain. Teach my kids to do the same. Whether East Coast, West Coast, East Coast, West Coast. Grab your wraps, roll it up. If you rep West Coast, East Coast. Sasha Rain, thanks West for the love. East Coast. Sasha Rain, thanks for the love. Grab your glasses, take a toast. If you rep East Coast, Sasha Rain. Life be all for wonderful things. Being the travel is a privileged thing. Came back to the East, air wasn't fresh. Streets filled with trash, various people in the eye. It's easy to tell who's up a middle class. Police and racism, same as crash. Back to where they not social, where they less vocal. When they don't know you, be careful. Show you around the East Coast, West Coast, East Coast, West Coast. Grab your raps, roll it up. If you rap, East Coast, whether East Coast, West Coast, East Coast. West Coast, pop your bottles and toss the cork. If you rep West Coast, both coasts are known to give you fame. Got Papa Ross, he's playing cram is your way. Got you bobbing and weaving like cash is clay. Most thugs turn Muslim in older days. Change their name to a law they pray. Probably till they decay. This go out to the east and west. For big and pop, y'all, let's connect. Brother East Coast, West Coast, East Coast, West Coast. Grab your raps, roll it up. If you rep, West Coast. Brother East Coast, West Coast, East Coast, 
West Coast. You can't get the West without the ES. So it's manifested that we connect. Uh. You know what it is. Joke, no joke. Learn from mistakes, baby. You know what it is. Greg on the track. Rest in peace, baby. Eat a wall, we in now. You know what it is. Joe, no joke. Smile, treat me, you know. Yeah. Oh, shit. Joe, I'm in DR. My man, Delvin. See you. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Dominican Republic. All right? Yeah. We here. Yeah. Joke, no joke. Primo, you ain't want to give me no beat, so I'm stealing one. Take it personal. You know you my guy, Primo. Love you. You going to give me a beat after this one? I never thought that you would cry at me, go against me. And backstab me. Third eye is strong, word is bond. Put you on the fakes and now you won. I gave you support and you play me. For those who play with butt, yeah, I'm talking. Breakfast club, revolt, whatever. All I know is birds of a feather hang with those that they hate. Once the realness, now you fake. And I see through you, what you gonna do? When they book you and your duke shoot, I know you think I'm expose you. This ain't no threat, take it personal. Choke no joke 2023 It's all me You hear me? 2023 is all me They say why I don't come around the game Cause all y'all dudes undercover gay And I don't play those fucking games Yo stop the track I'm fucking slay Rest in peace K Slay man Let's get Choke no joke Yeah Tom documentary is out right now Make sure y'all get that Amazon Prime, Tubi, Apple TV, Joke No Jokes. The Tunnel documentary is out right now, man. Support your brother. Go stream that tonight. Cluster, Stash Movies on YouTube. All right? You know what it is. Supreme Bigger Figure, Big Cap, The War End. The Club King. The DJ Johnny Walker Red. MC Frank Jigger, the celebrity's choice. Sean Brophy, sound engineer. Choke No Joke, legendary videographer. Sterling Cox, I was the head of security. Alpha Grinion. My name is V. Omega. Big G. It's Ben Rock from the legendary Naughty by Nature. Dallas Peter the Ghost, LOX, D Block. Tex, Smith and Wesson. LB Fan, Mr. Cheeks. The Cool, the DJ, the Red Alert. Kid Capri. The Tunnel was a hip hop movie. It was the epicenter. It was the domain, the temple. It was the mecca. Nothing was that melting pot of hip hop that kept the paradigm going. It's almost like what Rucker did for street basketball. The Tunnel was that of music industry. My Sunday ritual going to the Tunnel was, I'm telling you, your ass better be there. We just pretty much did push ups. We had to drink a couple bottles of Hennessy, go get smoked, leave the jewelry and watches at home. Before you even get to the tunnel, you gotta get on the block. You started from 11th Avenue, and when you got to that door, the search procedures was no other. First time I ever heard of take your shoes off, open your mouth, was in the tunnel. It was damn near anything but a full cavity search. Security at the tunnel was no joke. The beatdowns did happen. Some of them, if you had that chain out, that shit was leaving with one of them niggas. We had a handful of cats. When we were taking you out, they were digging in your pockets. The code check at the tunnel was crazy because you ain't know if you was gonna get your shit back. Sometimes the bloops happen where you might not get your coat. A lot of boys wanted to get their girls some fur coats, you know? So, I mean, it was free. The bar was always on till after the tunnel. You might get fake alcohol. Bartenders might have got counterfeit. The dance floor was always rocking. It looked like a video all the time. The tunnel had a very unique situation at the bathroom. It was co-ed. The bathroom was Solomon Gomorrah. I was like this, looking, trying to look past the dudes like when they was going in the urinal. The tunnel was a one-stop shop. They had food, they had alcohol, drugs. I saw weed the tub. It was just oozing money. Backstage is like the club amongst the club. That's where all the so-called stars who were scary to be in the crowd, that's where they hung out at. The dopest things about the tunnel for me to remember is hearing my records get played up in there. The top 
maybe of all time tunnel banger. Or well, anything bad, boy. Every biggie racket, any shit by hoes. Shaquan's was bananas in there. Nori Capone, that bang bang. Any up. Any one of Buster joints. Wild Out would absolutely start a fight. The best performance I've ever seen, Jay Z performed in front of the DJ booth. The DJ booth was bouncing like a ball. Snoop and Dre. When Dre was there. DMX, get at me, dog. The king of the tunnel was Jay Z. Buster Rhymes. DMX is the king. Queen of the tunnel. Mary J. Blige. Foxy and Lil Kim. E. King of the tunnel, record label wise, was Def Jam. It's bad boy. The best DJ at the tunnel was Flex. Big cap, all day. Flex used to break off the record, but he used to try to bully cap, like, don't spin this, because when I get here, I want to spin it. No, nigga, fuck wrong with you. What the tunnel did for artists is solidify their street music. That gave us a platform, set up Rough Riders, Rockefeller, Bad Boy, slew of other artists. The closing of the tunnel, it was kind of sad because that was a big piece of hip hop. So losing the tunnel was like a little kid losing Disney. A famous mosque closing down. I think when the tunnel closed, it was necessary. Niggas was coming to miss me. When you hear people of the late 70s, I talked about Studio 54. The tunnel was the Studio 54 of hip hop. Out now on Tubi, Apple TV, Amazon Prime, Cluster, Stash Movies. All right, the judge has officially ruled, y'all. Keefe D will be staying in jail. WAC 100 cannot bail him out because WAC 100 is bailing him out for business purposes, and he lied about it. The fact that he lied about it, he was bailing him out for business purposes, the judge has ruled and denied Keefe D bond through WAC 100. So the person that really is bailing them out, you know, you might want to try to go through some other channels or something like that. You know, WAC wasn't it. I knew it last night when I did the research on North River Insurance Company and Crum and Foster, and I see how they was going through this backdoor ways and seeing this one star rating for this insurance company i knew it wasn't going to work i told y'all then i tell y'all so it's back is whack to the drawing board y'all all right so it's whack to the drawing board for kvd and uh i mean i don't want to see nobody in jail but especially brother you know cancer and things like that but he only there because he put himself there you know what I mean? So the final conclusion, y'all, the judge has ruled that Keefe D cannot come home through WAC 100 because WAC 100 is bailing them out for business purposes and you cannot make money while you're in jail for a murder. And all, that's it, all right? I'll see y'all later on at the guard hour. At the guard hour. <laughs> now I need to go work out so y'all probably be seeing me work out sooner than later alright peace